There's a fundamental part of building tools that comes even before the choice of how you're going to do it, right? So I want to start with the why. So at Brex, we believe that we, so we are a software company, right? We don't believe that Brex is going to scale with people, right? That's not how we're going to scale the company. If our operations team is based on Excel spreadsheets, and a Dropbox folder where you drop files and that's how you, 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 you coordinate things and then creating tickets against engineering to execute things directly on a database. That's not how you're gonna scale. You need to empower people. And I'm gonna come back to that. You need to empower people to make decisions and to execute things. Uh, and so in the very early days of Brex, we were like, you know what, we're gonna scale. We are gonna be a big company. We are gonna be a big company. And because of that, we want to invest in tools, in automated tools, so we empower teams to make these decisions without having to rely on engineering to do those. So, you know, that's the overall thinking of why you should build tools in the beginning of your company. If you are ambitious, if you're going to scale your company, you should probably build tools in the beginning because your operations people are going to be much more effective. Your customer support team is going to be much more effective and they're going to be able to give a very good treatment for your customers. Um, and so that's the why. Now on the how. So yeah, as you mentioned, we decided very early in the process to create these tools in Brex. And um, I think that we had the experience at Pagarmi in the past um, of building tools. So for context, I worked at Pagarmi for two years before I joined Brex. And uh, we were at a point where we were scaling the company uh, very, very like aggressively at that time. Uh, we, we had a, around like, again, 10 times the scale like in the company in the period that I was there. And uh, we were at a point, we didn't have much internal tools. So the way that we did at Pagarmi was we had the customer dashboard and we had another deployment of the same code base, which we call the admin dashboard. And the admin dashboard live in a separate um, deployment, of course, and then this deployment had additional things. So the customer support agent or the operations agent, they could impersonate the user and they could make operations on behalf of the users and, and even, even like advanced operations, additional buttons on the dashboard, as we say. So that was the, the, the strategy that we went um, in there. The difference is we had a very high cost of operation on that because first it was, it was a layer on top of the existing dashboard. So engineers always had to use lots of caution to not show an operation that was an administrative operation for our customers. So that imposed a lot of, of wor additional work when you're developing a front end. And what we ended up doing um, over time was to deprecate that uh, and move over to dedicated tools. Um, and at that time, we were building at Pagarmi a component library, a design system, and we were recreating our dashboard um, from scratch. And so I saw the opportunity, opportunity at that time to build a framework for creating dashboards. So instead of just creating the Pagarmi dashboard, why not create a tool that you can run a command line and this command line basically bootstraps a new dashboard with a login page, with some charts, some tables, some details and screens and all of those things that basically every tool kind of needs to have, right? And, and we spent quite some engineering resources in that and we were pretty successful in general. Um, our, our operations team in, uh, at Pagami had a couple engineers dedicated to it and they created amazing tools for chargebacks, for a fraud detection, uh, all using these dashboards. And uh, the problem is we ended up with 15 different code bases to maintain now. And then every time that you update a component on the library that can, has the potential to break all of these tools. Because one more time, tools don't have the, uh, the much rigor that product has. And so, Maybe they don't use the right patterns. Maybe they don't focus on making the components reusable. Maybe they don't focus on code quality as much, right? Uh, maybe they don't have testing as well. And, and so it's really, it was really, it started to get really, really hard to manage that. Uh, and so when I joined Brax, I was absolutely mind blown because 
Retool, I didn't even know that Retool existed. Uh, I, I, I knew Retool when I joined Brex and I was absolutely mind blown. Um, for context, before I joined Brex, I was helping a friend on his company called PageDraw. And PageDraw is an online design editor that you can drag and drop components, you know, just like Retool. And, uh, but the difference is that it compiles React code. So basically you can build your own UI in there, export React code, and then just hook that to, you know, calls to your administrative systems. Um, and then when I joined Brex, I saw Retool and I was like, oh, wow, that makes so much more sense because it's very tied to one specific use case and it solves a very, a very well scoped problem of internal tools. Uh, I was absolutely mind blown. And I think it was the right decision for Brex because with my previous experience, seeing how much time, how much resources we have spent building internal tools by writing code, we spent just so much time and so much money. And for sure, the returns are still valid. I still think that we had lots of returns by building these tools because the end user experience is what I personally care about. And if we are providing a great user experience, that's great. But if I could use these resources to build products, to build other things, to improve these tools even further, I would. Thank you.